Hi, I have here three functions and they're all kind of similar to each other but not exactly the same. And we're going to look at these three functions and compare and contrast the continuity of these three functions. So uh, the first thing I would notice here about my first function, f, is that this is a rational function. The numerator and denominator are polynomials. And you might remember from calculus one that rational functions are continuous on their domain. There's technically a theorem that says that. The theorem may not be worded in exactly those words, but that's what it says, is that a rational function is continuous or the function output is equal to the limit at every point in the domain of the function. So you can extend that to multivariable functions here. Here I have a polynomial in the numerator and denominator. So I have a rational function and this function would be continuous on its domain. So I really just need to think about the domain of this function and the first thing I would notice here is that it has a denominator that is zero when xy is zero, zero. So we would say that this function is continuous on all of our two except the origin. And the reason why, if you think back to the definition of continuity, would be that f of zero, zero is undefined. All right, so these other two functions are piecewise defined so that uh, the domain of both of these other two functions includes all of our two. Um, we use the rational function, which is defined everywhere except the origin, and then these functions are both piecewise defined, so they have a different output given when xy is equal to 0, 0. So for these, uh, the functions defined everywhere, so f of xy exists at all xy in R2, um, and then what I need to think about when I'm thinking about continuity of these functions is the limit as xy approaches 0, 0. That might be the place where we could run into some trouble with continuity of these two functions here. So uh, fortunately, the part of the function where xy is not equal to 0, 0 is the same for both of those functions. So I can consider that limit as xy approaches 0, 0 of 2x squared y over x squared plus y squared, and that will tell me something about both of these functions here once I figure out what's happening with this limit. Okay, so I need to think about this limit, and one thing you might think about doing is looking at a graph of this function uh, in order to think about whether you think this limit exists or does not exist, but even without looking at that graph, you might notice that there are some features of this function that would indicate you might want to use polar coordinates to think about this limit. So there are two important features that would indicate polar coordinates would help. One is that I have this x squared plus y squared, which can be rewritten as r squared in polar coordinates. So I have this reduction in the number of variables I'm considering. And the other feature is that my point that I'm approaching is the origin. So because I'm approaching the origin, I can let r approach zero and I can handle a lot of paths of approach, all of the paths of approach toward the origin by just letting r approach zero. All right, so I'm gonna convert this to polar coordinates. So I'll have the limit as r approaches zero of two. In place of x, I'll put r cosine theta and I'll put r sine theta in place of y. And then I'll go ahead and simplify this. Uh, so I'll have some r squareds that will cancel. My r squared in the denominator will cancel with the r squared that I have here in the numerator inside my square. So I'll be left with 2r cosine squared theta sine theta. All right, and so I'm basically gonna think about that as a product of two expressions here. When r approaches zero, this 2r is going to approach zero. And the other thing that's important to consider here is to make sure that this part here stays bounded. Cosine theta and sine theta are always between negative one and one. So this expression here will always be between negative one and one when I square and multiply those things times each other. So this is bounded, or we might say that it stays finite. So when I have something that's approaching zero times something that stays finite, that will force the entire expression to zero. Technically, that's some sandwich theorem going on there if you want to write out the sandwich theorem. All right, but that work there in converting to polar coordinates has shown me that this limit is zero. So for both the g of xy and the h of xy functions, 
I have shown that the limit exists at all points. The functions are continuous everywhere except uh, where the denominator might be zero, uh, so at the origin. And I've shown here that the limit exists even when we approach the origin. And then the third thing to consider about continuity would be whether the function output at zero, zero is equal to or not the limit as xy approaches zero, zero. And for the g function, that is true. g of zero, zero is zero. That's piecewise defined function. And the limit is zero. So that is, the answer to that question is yes for the g function. Uh, so the g function is continuous on all of R2. The h function, to contrast with that, the h function though has some difficulty. When I think about the h function, uh, h of zero, zero is two, and the limit as xy approaches zero, zero for the h function is not two, it is zero. So the h function here is not continuous at zero, zero. It is continuous everywhere except at zero, zero. And the reason that function would fail to be continuous at zero, zero would be that the limit and the function output value are not equal to each other at that point. All right, so try some homework problems determining where a function is continuous and where it is not.